born, I was legally blind. When I was 13, the doc, they took me to the home for the blind, and the, uh, uh, the top eye doctor in Philadelphia, which is where I grew up, said I'd have to stay at the home for the blind because I'm, I'm blind and will not go to college. And, and that's the point at which my mother said, uh, you, you, that, that's going you die there. And, you, you, and, the, and she said, you're gonna work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the rest of your life, if you're gonna stay out of the home for the blind. But also, it's a dream of every Jewish mother for their child to become a doctor. So I was pre-med through uh, actually my junior year in, in college, but then they said, and I, I know nothing about, I don't remember it at all, they said I almost blew up the chemistry lab, organic chemistry lab. I could not take labs anymore, and therefore I could not go to medical school. And so uh, when they said I couldn't go to medical school, I said, hello, law school. So when I went to law school, uh, I had some readers who would read, read the materials. They'd read the, the stuff in, in, in a tape recorder, and I'd, I'd listen to it. And I, again, as part of an overcompensating dynamic, I, 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 I could remember everything I heard. But the problem then became when I graduated law school, I needed a reader for the bar exam, and they would not provide one. So I was ready not to practice law. I didn't know what the next uh, next thing for me to do would be, except be homeless. And the, uh, actually, there were some kind people. I didn't know they were doing it. Uh, they, they worked with the, the bar examiners and got them to agree to have a reader for me uh, for the bar exam. And that was before the ADA Act, so there was no right to accommodations at all in 1973. My name is Rick Teitelman, and I serve the people of Missouri as a judge on the Supreme Court of Missouri. Judge Teitelman, I think, is probably the most generous person I've ever met. He's always willing to reach out and help young lawyers, whether they face challenges in their law careers or face challenges becoming a lawyer, as he has. Um, he's always willing to help anyone with anything, and I think uh, that's one of the greatest things about the judge. The first and foremost thing we need to do as judges is decide cases, decide the law. But it's also important for us as an institution, as a judicial institution, to get out to the public, work on different programs, and I'm also committed to helping everyone who is challenged. Judge Teitelman, uh, seeing that he has faced challenges in his legal career and in his life, and the goals that he's achieved and, you know, sitting on the Supreme Court, uh, foremost among them, it's sort of opened new possibilities to me in my legal career and what I think about what I will be able to accomplish in my career. And certainly, you know, I would love to become a judge someday and uh, seeing that Judge Teitelman, the path that he has blazed, um, really makes that seem like a, a, an attainable goal to me. Today, in fact, in life, I feel I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth, to quote Lou Gehrig. I've been so lucky to have so many people that, without me asking, help me, and it's my job to help them. And I'm just going to try the best I can to keep paying it forward, whatever I can do to help others. I can think of no, no one uh, that I know that is, is better or more deserving of this, this award. Um, Judge Teitelman, his worked tirelessly throughout his whole career for the kind of inclusion and kind of access that persons with disabilities need and should have. Uh, I'm humbled to be selected to, to receive this award and, and I, I, re I received the award for others who can't be there uh, who should deserve it more than I.